Welcome to another lesson about organic molecules. We've learned about many types of organic molecules and some of the uses of these compounds, and it's not about to stop. We are now going to learn some specific ways in which these amazing organic molecules are made. Earlier in the series, we learned how two smaller compounds could be used to make a different molecule with very different properties. This reaction showed us one of the ways that the functional groups on organic molecules change to produce a new molecule. We mustn't forget that the functional group is what gives an organic molecule most of its character. The functional groups interact with other chemicals around it. We saw that the boiling point and even the smell of the new chemicals changed when smaller molecules reacted with each other. This means that we can start to make or manufacture our own chemicals. Synthetic organic chemists find new and interesting ways to make the chemicals we need, such as new plastics, medicines, and even hair care products. Today, we will take a closer look at some of the major types of reactions that these scientists use to make them. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to identify two of these reactions, namely substitution and addition reactions, and use this knowledge to predict the products of these reactions. Let's start with substitution. The name substitution means that something must be replaced with something else. It's a bit like a coach making a substitution during a soccer game. The question is, which functional group can replace another functional group? Most substitution reactions occur on saturated molecules. As you can see, there aren't many options for atoms to be replaced. The bonds between the carbon atoms in the chain are strong, so these bonds are not likely to be broken. This means that hydrogen atoms are the only atoms that can be replaced on a simple hydrocarbon like this. Think about this. What atom could replace hydrogen? Well, it's not an easy question but I'm going to show you that the answer is quite simple. The set of elements that are most likely to replace hydrogen are the halogens. Halogens are highly reactive and they can break the carbon-hydrogen bonds in a saturated hydrocarbon. The product of this is probably not new to you. They are called the haloalkanes. Here we can see that the place that is taken by the hydrogen atom is now filled by a halogen atom, chlorine. This does not happen very easily, and you may be wondering what happens to the hydrogen and where the chlorine atom comes from. The halogen chlorine is introduced as a diatomic molecule, Cl2. When energy from UV light is supplied, it gives chlorine enough energy to break up. The UV light comes from ordinary sunlight. The two separated chlorine atoms become radicals. That means that one electron from the electron pair that makes the bond is found on each chlorine atom. One of these chlorine radicals makes a new bond with a hydrogen atom on the hydrocarbon leaving an open bonding site on the carbon, which now becomes a carbon radical. I'm sure you can see that there is now space for the other chlorine atom to bond with carbon. Here we see the entire reaction. The highlighted atoms are the ones that swapped places. We had two reactants, the alkane propane and chlorine gas. By swapping chemical radicals, they made two products, the haloalkane, chloropropane, and hydrochloric acid. 
making a halo alkane is a good example of substitution. Substitution is one of the very few chemical reactions that can happen to saturated hydrocarbons. Can you remember the other possible reaction involving hydrocarbons when oxygen is present? Here's your clue. It's combustion, of course. Two of the most common reactions that can happen to a saturated hydrocarbon are substitution and combustion. Now, try to predict the products of one of these reactions. Bromine is placed in ethane and exposed to UV light to activate the reaction. The highlighted hydrogen atom is replaced by one of the bromine atoms. Can you see the product now? Two reactants produced two products by swapping radicals. This is an excellent example of a substitution reaction. Remember that all reactions with saturated hydrocarbons are difficult to start. So UV light is required to give the energy needed to start this reaction. These reactions are known to be very slow for this reason. Now that we've seen that saturated hydrocarbons react using substitution, let's see what happens when we react a halogen with an alkene. Remember in the second lesson we used bromine to tell a saturated from an unsaturated compound. We saw that bromine reacts very quickly with the unsaturated compound, leaving a colorless product. The speed at which the bromine reacts is a sign that bromine is not reacting in a substitution reaction, but in some other way. This brings us to the second type of reaction, addition. The word addition suggests the combination of two smaller parts into one organic molecule. Let's revise how bromine combines with an alkene. Our organic chemist, Philip, is going to show us something interesting. Pay attention to the types of reactions taking place. It's good to be with you all again. Welcome back to the lab. Today we'll cook up some amazing organic molecules simply by mixing them. Amira mentioned that bromine reacts very quickly with unsaturated hydrocarbons, but not with saturated ones. We'll see that again in a moment when we revisit the test for unsaturated compounds, but this time I'll be adding a twist. I want you to try and guess which type of reaction is taking place as we go along. Remember, this is the same bromine you saw reacting with ethane earlier. If we add a few drops of bromine dissolved in carbon tetrachloride to the cyclohexene, we expect to see that the red color of the bromine disappears very quickly. Remember that this shows us that the compound that we have is unsaturated. Since we know that this is cyclohexene, this should be the case. So let's add the drops of bromine solution and watch. Gosh, I'm always surprised at how quickly that goes. And now for the cyclohexane, which is saturated. As you can see, the solution does not change color. The bromine does not react with cyclohexane. Can you think of a way to react the cyclohexane with bromine? If you guessed that all we needed was a little time and UV light, you'd be correct. Look at this. I've had this test tube outside in bright sunshine to get some ultraviolet light, and the bromine has reacted. So let's summarize our findings. We saw that cyclohexene and bromine reacted very quickly, much faster than our other reaction, and without exposure to UV light. So this must have been another type of reaction not substitution. We also saw that cyclohexane and bromine did not react at first, but then reacted in UV light. This must be substitution. Well, I'm sure you've realized that the quick reaction was addition. Since you already know about substitution, let's go back to the studio 
and learn more about that amazing addition reaction we saw. It was amazing to see organic chemistry in action. Let's finish this lesson off by paying attention to the speedy addition reaction we saw in the laboratory. I didn't notice any additional products being made. Did you? During an addition reaction, two molecules combine. The organic molecule that was used in the lab is unsaturated. This means that those carbon atoms with a double bond between them have space for more atoms to join. The bromine atoms would like to bond with carbon, but this means that the bond between them must break. And one of the bonds that make up the double bond between the carbon atoms must break. This is to maintain one bond per bromine atom and four bonds per carbon atom. Here we can see the entire reaction. Take note that both of the bromine atoms combined with the alkene and broke one of the bonds between the double bonded carbon atoms. The product is a saturated dihaloalkane. Remember we use the prefix di because there are two halogen atoms bonded to the organic molecule. Halogens react very quickly with alkenes to make dihaloalkanes. We can also add other substances to alkenes and alkynes to saturate them. One of these substances is hydrogen. Hydrogen is not as reactive as the halogens, so it needs a catalyst to react, such as platinum. The hydrogen reacts in very much the same way as the bromine in the earlier reaction to make a saturated compound. This reaction is very useful to us. Addition is used to make margarine from sunflower oil. Hydrogen is added at high temperature and pressure, and this makes the molecules heavier. Can you think what effect that might have on the physical properties of the oil? Did you remember the link between a molecule's structure and properties? The molecules of the sunflower oil are now larger and heavier, meaning that the substance becomes more viscous and the melting point increases. The margarine made in this way is a solid at room temperature. So, addition has changed the chemical and physical properties of the compounds in sunflower oil. Amazing. That's all we have time for in this episode on reactions of organic molecules. But be sure to join us for the next lesson where we'll look at elimination reactions. To end, Try this task about the two reactions that we've learned about today. <laughs> Try to fill in the missing molecules in this diagram. Here is a hint. Look at the type of reaction in each case to identify the molecule that is missing. <laughs> For more information on organic molecules and related topics, please visit our website on www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn.